Seashells often have interesting textures such as ridges, spines, or smoothed, polished surfaces, making them fascinating to touch and examine. I make it a mission to go to the beach at least once a week on a quest to find these treasures. The exciting part is I never know what I'm going to find. It could be a pristine example of a really common shell, or maybe it's a specimen I rarely get to see. Either way, the beach never disappoints, and today we'll be beachcombing Little Hickory Island Park. It's summer, so the shells are gonna be a little tougher to locate, which is why I decided to go back to my car and grab my shell scoop. Any equipment that can help my mission is appreciated. Now, I will tell you, today is the first time one of the shells I find does not end up in my shell bag. And believe it or not, that made me really happy. And there were a couple of other encounters I had that were also rather exciting, and I'm going to share it all. So if you're ready to see what is out there for us today, let's go to the beach. I have not been to Little Hickory in what feels like forever. I right, snagged this yellow prickly cockle with a little hole in it because that's what I saw. I'm kind of walking toward the shelling location, which is kind of near some jetties. Here's a Florida fighting conch. Okay, you're looking okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what kind of things I'm gonna find today. So in the beginning, I might tend to hold on to a couple of things I might not normally hold on to. This is a broad ribbed cardita. Yeah, it's just, it's harder to find the shells in the summer. What do we got here? All right, yeah, we're not gonna worry about that. I think that was a coquina. And here is a little kitten paw. And this is a little spiny jewel box. And I held it really quick. Now we just stop for a second. I know they look really, really similar. Spiny jewel box left, kitten paw right. It's that little bit of red that kind of gives away the kitten paw. Let's do a check in. All right, so the tide is going out. I tried to give myself the best opportunities for finding shells. Now, what's this? I normally don't pay attention to oysters. Now, I believe this is a crested oyster. It's a little discolored. These are the oysters I normally find, and frankly, I don't really usually pay a lot of attention to them. Here's a better example of one. These are Eastern oysters. I have seen people make really, really cool things from these kind of seashells. So that is an Eastern oyster. All right, I popped into the water just to check on clarity, and the clarity is chocolate milk. It is, the visibility is zero. And there's just not a whole lot I can do about that. I've got my shell scoop. So just in case I see something, I might be able to scoop that out with my shell scoop. All right, we have a little bit of garbage. Yeah, that makes me think hurricane. That was probably like a tempered table or something, maybe an oven, I don't know. Now, hagstones. I have not picked up a hagstone in quite a while. So hagstones are stones that have these holes which are created through natural processes like water erosion or burrowing organism like an oyster pittock. So there's these little clams that kind of like burrow and make those really, really uh, symmetrical little holes in those stones. So I pick my head up and I look out and there's some manatees flopping around out there. Oh, it was awesome. Now, was I tempted to go out and like pet them? Well, sure, who wouldn't want to do that? But it's illegal. You're, it, you do not want to come even close to manatees. They're protected under several laws, including the Marine Mammal Protection Act of 1972, the Endangered Species Act of 1973, and the Florida Manatee Sanctuary Act of 1978. And the laws, they were designed to protect the manatees from harassment, harm, and there might be a couple of them out there. I'm kind of looking around. So the laws were designed to protect them from harassment, harm, disturbance, and make it illegal to touch, feed, or otherwise interfere with manatees in the wild. So as much as I wanted to maybe get closer, eh -eh, I'm going to play 
on the side of safety really for the animals. It's not safe for them. So I got just a little bit higher up on the beach so I can get a little bit better of a view. You might have caught me filming them. I did go live. They were playing for so long that I went live for a little while on YouTube. So that was pretty exciting. So when I look at this jetty, all I'm thinking is it, it used to actually be a legitimate jetty and it was just absolutely blasted by Hurricane Ian and it looks like it wasn't really repaired yet. Yep, there was two. Here's the first one. There's not, it's kind of like a little pile of rocks. It's not really a jetty, but let's see what might be collected around this pile of rocks. All right, we have a worm snail. Okay. All right, little bits and pieces, a lot of your arcs. We have a common Atlantic slipper snail. Oh, there's a two, two for one. Terrific, all right, what else is here? I do see a lot of those transverse arcs. Yeah, there's another yellow prickly cockle. That's a cockle, oh, yeah, ponderous arc. Here's another, oh, that's kind of nice, your Atlantic slipper snail. Oh, there's a little Florida prickly cockle, yep. Just a little blush of purple on the inside. And, oh, another worm snail. Terrific. All right. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like tinies or anything. It looks more just like pieces. Yep, yeah, there's your cross-barred Venus clam. You can always count on those to be around. And in retrospect, I wish I'd picked up more of the darker shells. So we have worm snails, a couple of slipper snails. Oh, look at that scallop. Oh, that's awesome. All right, gl I'm glad I took my time here. Okay, a couple of common stuff and then a very, very lovely scallop. Yeah, that scallop's pretty lovely as well. I'll go ahead and hang on to that too. Lots of craft shells. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so hard to find big, good shark eyes. But I'm going to put it back. I'm going to leave the aperture up. Yeah, I'm going to try to protect the next sheller from hoping that that might be an intact shark eye. Aw, oh, man. So broad rib cardita on top. It's broken. I'm keeping it anyway. The color is spectacular. Another little worm snail. Those are always fun. And then another little calico scallop with that terrific little burst pattern. Awesome. Here's another. Lovely little scallop. Yeah, I don't care what kind of great shell you give me. Any kind of great shell I will take. So that is a little calico scallop. Just lovely. Right, in the water. Oh, you are gorgeous. Florida fighting conch empty. Yeah, you can kind of check all those little tick boxes for me. Oh, and a little uh, mossy arc. Let's take a look at the mossy arc. Mm. Yeah, you're okay. I mean, for all intent and purposes, you, you're intact. You've been kind of beat up a little bit by some, yeah, some trying to grab that calcium off you. Here is another Florida fighting cock, not the other one we picked up. This one, oh yeah, got a little ecosystem with some slipper snails, so living slipper snails on top of the Florida fighting conk that is still alive and well, and it needs its shell. All right, what else? All right, so we're at the second quote unquote jetty now. And is this, oh, we got, yeah, that is a Apple Murex, but it's attached to something. And then look at this fighting conch. And what was really kind of crazy about this one, this is only the second time this has ever happened. There's an animal in it. Oh, so the animal is still alive. It's in its shell and that shell is broken. And I've had this happen before. I found a lightning whelk and the lightning whelk had a big hole in its shell. I am so bummed. I'm going through my head like, what can I repair the shell? And like, there's nothing I can do. I feel so helpless. Oh, good luck, my little friend. Yeah, I feel so terrible about this. It needs its protection, but we've also seen many, many shells that have managed to repair themselves. So perhaps this critter can do the same, but yeah, a little crazy. Just something like, a little sad. I wanted to share it anyway. That is nature. All right, we're by the second jetty. That actually looks a little more like a legitimate jetty. Excellent. We got some little breakers out there. Maybe we'll be able to wander around, see what other kind of fun things are out there. Okay, ready to do some exploring. Kind of got to the exploring grounds. Another gorgeous fighting conch. That's alive. And oh, you, oh, look at how beautifully it's worn down. Oh, it's so pretty, yep. 
that one I'm definitely keeping. I'm actually, I want to do a project with shelves that are worn down just so. A lovely zigzag arc or turkey wing. Take your pick. Yep. Do you like a good turkey wing? Fancy arcs. Oh, gorgeous. Uh, it's, it's, it's not perfect and I, I, I don't care. Yeah, you hold it like that. You can, kind of can't tell. Because I do, I hope to be able to kind of start making more things. So I want to collect more different types of shells. Maybe everything doesn't need to be perfect. Plus, I hate putting glue on perfect shells. Yeah, I'm cray cray. I'm a little crazy. All right, there's a lettered olive. So they're here. That particular one wasn't in very good condition. All right, just kind of poke around the seaweed. Okay, an Atlantic giant cockle. Terrific, nice cranberry color on the inside. All right, a little bit of, what is the other bivalve? Likely a calico scallop, yes. Of the pink variety. All right, hold on to that. Yeah, yeah, lovely color on the inside. Oh my goodness, you are so zigzaggy, yep. Yep, I'm holding on to you for sure. All right, a couple of great shells. You know, it's definitely more satisfying to look for shells that are not perfect because uh, lots of more opportunities to keep things. Now we have a little hermit crab here. It wasn't terribly active. I wanted to see if it would come out and I can kind of maybe see what kind of hermit crab, I'm guessing long wristed hermit crab. So we're not sure. It's, it's, it's rather algae covered, an algae covered hermit crab. Oh, a sand dollar. Let's see. It, mm, yeah, well, it's still a sand dollar. Unfortunately, it's only about two thirds. That's okay. And the rest of it here, nope. All right. So that I'm not gonna collect. I'll leave that here. But maybe we'll find a whole one. Oh my goodness. So this is what we would consider a freak shell and it's alive. So this is a fighting conch. Now look at the top of its shell. It's all wonky. Something happened either to the animal or to the shell. And the animal had to kind of like figure it out. Just kind of grow around it anyway. Good job, buddy. For, I think this is the first living like freak shell. I say that with kindness. We love the freak shells. Oh, that's awesome. A freak snail. Oh, all right. So I know it's a critter and I do see the eyeball popping out of the front of the shell. And actually the second eyeball is kind of down, down there. So I'm just kind of checking out this critter. Okay. It's going to go schlumping. That is the locomotion movement. I like to call it. They schlump. It goes over those seashells and the, oh dear. And then I just kind of got curious. All right, now what's going to happen? Is it going to come out of its shell and write itself? Which it can. Let's see. And I, oh, this also reminded me of that beautiful pink shell I found here. Oh, look at that. All right. So that's what's going to happen. The waves are just going to write it again. Okay. Well, that was, it was what it was. I really just wanted to see how that was going to resolve itself. And I had found a very pink shell here. It was gorgeous. That's a banded tulip, but it was alive. So I had to leave it. So little hickory has been good for beautiful fighting conks, but the trick is to find one, a keeper. Oh, lovely banded tulip. A lot better than that other one. All right. See this one, a shell animal had to repair itself. It was broken at some point and it actually, the bands don't quite line up. That's okay. Terrific, terrific banded tulip. <gasps> Yay. So this is a short spine sea urchin and it's covered in seashells. I'm not going to pick it up. They tend to drop all their shells. I don't want to disturb it. I have not been seeing the urchins the way I used to before the hurricane. So I get very excited when I get to see them. I normally, it was, they used to be all over the place before the hurricane and now it's very different. So that's a lovely pointed, glossy, lettered olive. Kind of your general color there. Oh my goodness, the color on this one. Oh, I want it so badly. It's kind of like this mustard yellow color, but yep, creature's not quite done. Oh my gosh, I love that color. Oh, that's great. All right, creature, I just kind of admired your home and I'll just keep, I'll keep shopping. You're probably alive as well, yep. Oh my goodness. Look at that shell. Oh. 
Yeah, it, so it feels like the best, oh, maybe not all of them. I do have some pretty spectacular fighting conks, but the ones with really great, yeah, the ones with really great patterns are taken, or the, the critter is not quite done. All right, here we have an empty one. Oh, look how nice. Now, those little white little dots, I found lots of stuff. I don't know what it is. I am totally, completely guessing baby barnacles. I have no idea what it is, but it just feels like maybe it's baby barnacles. I don't know. Don't know. Another, oh, wait, that's absolutely gorgeous. So another lovely, like a lemon colored fighting conch. Yep, terrific. You'll come home with me. Oh. <gasps> Shut the front door. Well, would you look at that? Literally just sitting there, this fantastic alphabet cone. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. And again, it's got those little dots on it. Now I realize the aperture's broken, but that is a fantastic shell. And it was not mine for long. I don't know what came over me. I gave it away. So I would like to gift this to you. I'm gonna gift you this lovely yeah, alphabet so con. Oh, much. you're so welcome. <gasps> it's perfect. Yay. Oh my God. Yeah, I don't normally give my shells away, but I, like I said, something just kind of came over me. It just felt like the right thing to do. So this is my new shell friend, Mary. Mary just said I made her day. And I can't, that felt so good. Like it felt really good finding it but it felt better giving it away. It just felt like the right thing to do. I cannot explain it other than it's just what I felt and I went for it and I gave it away and I'm feeling good about it because look, I get to keep this. Now I know it's got a little beach stuff on it. I cleaned it, it's gorgeous. I'll show you at the very end of the video. All right, it's looking a little Wenzel trappy. So let's maybe tiny, maybe. Uh, would you look at that? So that is a paper cockle. It's either a broad paper cockle or a spiny paper cockle. I do not know which. It's frankly, even if it was in really good condition, I still don't know that I'd be able to tell them apart, but that's that's a paper cockle. Now check out this ibis. Their, their uh, beaks are so sensitive. Nope. Yeah, just like that. It felt a crab and just down the hatch it went. So they'll eat little mole crabs, little other crustaceans. So that's a little ibis. And you might notice that the water was looking a little, a little brown. Well, that's from tannins and it look, kind of looks like tea. And that can happen, the color can change from like a light yellow to a dark brown. And it's a result of the decay of natural organic substances, such as leaves, bark, and wood. And you can see how much stuff is kind of going on out there. It's naturally decaying, going into the water. It's such a natural process. I know it looks a little weird, but it's all good. Now I assume this critter's alive. I peek. Yeah, it is. Ugh. I hate to disturb it, but I'd also hate to leave a shell on the beach. And it was so hot. I started walking. I was like, wait a minute. I'm going to put you in the water. Yeah, so I'm sorry to have disturbed you, but I'm going to give you a little bath. There you go. It was hot out. All right, here's one we can keep. So that is a lightning whelk. That animal we just put in the water was a lightning whelk. Here is a keeper shell lightning whelk. Fantastic. And, oh, I love these, a little tinted cantharis. Oh, that's terrific. Oh, this might be the first trip in a while. I'm not gonna get one of those ribbed cantharis. Does it matter? Does it count? Yeah, I still want that cantharis. Now look at all the little dots. Oh, the shell is beautiful. The animal's alive. Oh, he's so crazy looking. Oh, but the shell was gorgeous. And those little dots again. Aww. Look at that face. Don't worry, friend. Here you go. There you go. I'm going to put you back. I just wanted to show everybody your gorgeous shell. It has been very nice, very relaxing. Let's do a little check-in. All right. It's 90. It's hot. <laughs> should say 90 and hot. And the tide's down. That's it. It's not going to go out any further. It's going to start coming back in. And I originally thought, yay, maybe the tide will push shells in, but yeah, I just don't think that it's, that's the kind of day I'm gonna have today. All right, we do have some gorgeous lettered olives. What else is representing here in Little Hickory? Not tinies. It's mostly crushed up stuff. Yeah, which is fine. A little oyster piece there. 
but not tiny. So yeah, I suspect we're probably not going to find a Wintel trap. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so pretty. I know it's alive. I do. I, I know it's alive. I just, oh my God. Yeah. Gorgeous shell, friend. Oh man, that is so pretty. Yeah, Little Hickory is like the land of the lust <laughs> for the fighting conks. And I think it is high time for you to enjoy some beach time. So I'm going to be quiet and let you enjoy the sounds of the gulf. Now, this lump of wood, check it out. Those little holes were probably made by wood pittocks. So there's other critters, they'll make holes in those stones like the hagstone, and then others do it in wood. And those are known as wood pittocks. So pretty nice, pretty nice day, all things considered. The, the finding the shells was a little more challenging than it normally is, but I did want to give Little Hickory a try. It hadn't been here in quite some time. All right, some nice bivalves, another kitten paw. So those were calico scallops. That's a kitten paw. Oh, look at this. This is also a bivalve. This is a jewel box, but it is a corrugate jewel box. I think it kind of looks like chewed up bubble gum. Yeah, I think they're neat. Corrugate jewel box. Okay, so I'm back up. I guess this is the second jetty. Look at the shell pile. All right, so I kind of missed this the first time I was uh, close to the water. So now that we have this gorgeous shell pile, let's see what all is here. All right, yellow prickly cockle. I don't know if it's one of your favorites. It's one of mine. Yep. Fabulous. They're a lot more round than the Florida prickly cockles. All right, there's ton All right, buttercup leucine. No, just a piece of a buttercup leucine. And yeah, pieces. Great. I mean, this is like free shopping for craft shells. That is a jingle. Lovely little thing. And another yellow prickly cockle. All right, that's been here a little while. It's not quite glossy. Yeah, crossbarred Venus glam. Yeah. Transverse arc. Just depend on those. Yep, there's another one. Kitten paw, a little wacky looking thing. What do we got here? Yeah, it's probably, looks like a, I think that's a yellow prickly cockle. It's round, even though the color looks like a Florida prickly cockle. All right, a little calico scallop. So yeah, I mean, it, all in all, it's really just like a whole bunch of craft shells. I did see a worm snail I could have grabbed. Oh, well. Speaking of worm snails, let's talk about the variable worm shell. Now, these are pretty cool because what they do is they anchor themselves to the bottom of the ocean and they can form reefs. So many South Florida mangrove islands actually owe their origins to these reef building variable worm shells. They filter feed in place. They gill feed. Um, they call it gill filtering. They eat plankton. Here is a little coquina. Oh dear. Yeah, the hinge was a little bit, a little bit fragile. So variable worm shells, kind of cool. They can build islands. All right, lovely buttercup leucine. Lovely, not quite as lovely as this yellow prickly cockle. Oh, I have a good feeling. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's a buttercup leucine. Full fat, beautiful. All right, it's a little pile of yellow shells. So another yellow prickly cockle, the Florida prickly cockle. I feel like I'm speed shelling here. All right, here's another, yeah, buttercup leucine. I guess the tide's coming in a little bit. That's another yellow prickly cockle. It's kind of light though. And another. So yeah, 
That was uh, 45 seconds of speed shelling yellow shells. And another prickly cockle. I'm going to say that is a prickly cockle. That's what I'm going to say. And buttercup leucine. Okay, more. Oh, there's a top of a pear wilk. Kitten paw. Another variable worm shell. Yeah, that's why I'm going so quick. The, the tide may come and snatch my treasure, so... Trying to quickly see what's here, kind of snag it. Oh, look! Oh, an apple murex! It's broken, don't care! I'm gonna totally keep in that. What else is. I see a little, yeah, a little fighting conch. Yeah, I should snag that. Oh, that's really nice. Well, it's a really nice looking shell. It's kind of pointy, yeah. Oh yeah, on a day like today, you're like a star. That's beautiful. Oh, turkey wing. Another turkey wing, yeah, you're fine. A little bit of beach stuff, that'll pick off, no problem. Auger and a serif, excellent. I do see a bubble, <laughs> bubble. Yeah, it's the one I was, there we go, Florida cone. Oh, look at that other, what is this other flat thing? It looks like a kitten paw color, but I don't know, I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to try to hold on to it, but I'm definitely going to keep that Florida cone. Yeah, that was very cool. <gasps> a colorful moon snail, broken, don't care. Day like today, you're gorgeous, you're a star, you're coming home with me. Oh, and another little turkey wing. Terrific. A couple more colorful shells. A mossy arc. And this one has periostracum on it. So I'm going to add you to my special box. I do have a turkey wing with some periostracum on it. So that's what that kind of like ugh, leafy stuff. Yeah, that kind of brown leafy stuff. I'm going to hold on to that. Look at the color of that. Oh, it's, it's just so delicate. So that is a calico scallop. Just happens to have the really beautiful coloring on it. So little hickory was pretty fun. Oh you know, look, it's summer. It's going to be a little bit harder to find all those great shells. I haven't been here since before the hurricane, and I really didn't know what to expect. And uh, I just I'm just feeling all warm and fuzzy inside because I gave that shell away. So in the future, who knows? Maybe I'll be giving more shells away. Coquinas. Oh, these are really cool. So these little swell these bivalves they're known for rapidly burrowing into the sand and they use a muscular foot to dig into the sand and they also kind of time it with the waves so that they can kind of move across the sand with the waves yeah pretty cool and they're commonly found along the sandy shores of the atlantic and the gulf coast of the united states particularly in Florida and they do inhabit this intertidal zone where they often are seen kind of at the water's edge burrowing into the sand as the waves recede. They are filter feeders. They feed by siphoning plankton and organic particles from the water and their feeding helps filter and clean the ocean and they're a really important food source for various shorebirds, fish and other marine animals. Plus their little shells are kind of cool. I actually I think our next little shelling adventure, I do want to go look for tinies and hopefully we'll find some of those coquinas. So little hickory, you were swell. Those manatees were awesome. Got a couple little souvenirs. I made Mary's day and what could be nicer than that. And then just to finish things off, look, a skimmer. I was standing far enough back away from the water where, yeah, I didn't spook it too much, but we got to see a skimmer a little bit, a little bit of a skimmer once again. So another wonderful beach trip under my belt and a little bit of garbage was off the beach. It's only 0.35 ounces. I know it's so little, but it all adds up in total. I still, it's only a little over 51.8 pounds of garbage. I'll get there. One of these days it'll be 52 pounds. And so I did manage to get some really nice treasures. I did grab some of those Florida prickly cockles. There was those two slipper snails I held on to, and there was a bunch of those other calico scallops. The scallops were nice. There's a base scallop, some uh, apple murex, jingles, kitten paws, 
the bubble, a couple coquinas, some fly speck serif, the serif, the auger, and some yellow prickly cockles. Definitely hold, held on to a couple of those. The colorful moon snail, the banded tulip. There's another spiny jewel box. The mossy arcs and the turkey wings. There's a couple of broad rib carditas. The Florida Fighting Conks, I will never be disappointed coming home with those. I did grab a couple oysters, some of those worm shells, and then some buttercup leucines, the Atlantic Giant Cockles, the Hagstones, some of those lettered olives, and then my favorites were all these shells. It was the scallops, the Florida cone, that little tiny turkey wing, there was only one lightning whelk, the cantharis, and that sand dollar just kind of represents the alphabet cone that isn't here, but is happily in someone else's collection. And so that just makes me happy as well. Perfect segue over to Patreon, who I really don't think I would do this without you. I don't think that I would have been able to stick this through as many years as I'm doing this. So thank you for your encouragement and thank you for your support. It truly means the world to me. Next week, like I said, alluded to earlier, I want to go look for tiny shells. So I'm going to go to Bunch. We haven't been there in forever. Hopefully I can score a couple wental traps. We'll just have to see. So until then, I hope you have yourself a wonderful week and I will see you again next Sunday.